Hi, I'm Fitz from the Flutter team. At this point, we've learned how to do some awesome animation using Flutter's implicit animations. Animated Foo and Tween Animation Builder give you the ability to just drop some basic animations into your app. These animations typically go in one direction, tweening from a start to an end where they stop. Between the scenes, Flutter is taking control, assuming intentions and disposing of any need for you to worry about the transition from one thing to the next. This works perfectly for many animation goals, but sometimes that ever forward arrow of time leaves us feeling temporarily locked. So as we pause and contemplate the laws of thermodynamics and the inevitable heat death of the universe, wouldn't it be nice if we could just reverse time and do it all again? Enter our first foray into Flutter's explicit animations. While we won't be building any time machines today, we will be learning how to gain a bit more control over your animations using transition widgets. These are a set of Flutter widgets whose names all end in transition. Scale transition, decorated box transition, size transition, and more. They look and feel a lot like our animated blah widgets. Positioned transition, for example, animates such widgets transition between different positions, much like animated positioned. But there's one major difference. These transition widgets are extensions of animated widget. This makes them explicit animations. But what does that really mean for us app developers? Come on, let's see what makes these animations tick. Hi, welcome back. Let's look at creating an animation of galactic proportions. I've provided us with a starting image, but in this initial unanimated state, it doesn't feel very galactic. Our first quest then, to mix in some rotation. The rotation transition widget is a handy one that takes care of all of the trigonometry and transformations math to make things spin. We only need to give it three things. First is a child, which is the widget we want to rotate. The galaxy fits, so we'll put it there. Next, we need to give rotation transition the point our galaxy rotates around. If you look really, really close, no, not that close, our galaxy's black hole is roughly in the middle where we'd normally expect. So we'll give an alignment of center making all of our rotational math aligned to that point. Lastly is this mysteriously named turns property. The API docs tells us this is, wait, an animation? I thought we were creating an animation. Not to worry. This is part of what makes the rotation transition and all the other transition widgets an explicit animation. We could accomplish the same rotation effect with an animated container and a transform, but then we'd rotate once and then stop. With our explicit animations, we have control of time and can make it so that our galaxy never stops spinning. The turns property is expecting something that will give it a value and notify it when that value has changed. Animation double is just that. For rotation transition, the value corresponds to how many times we've turned, or more specifically, the percentage of one rotation we've completed. One of the easiest ways to get an animation double is to create an animation controller, which is a controller for an animation. This controller handles checking for ticks and gives us some useful controls over what the animation is doing. We'll need to create this in a stateful widget, since keeping a handle on the controller will be important in our not too distant future. Since the animation controller also has its own state to manage, we create it in init state and dispose of it in dispose. There are two parameters we must give to the animation controller's constructor. The first is a duration, which is how long our time machine, I, I mean animation, lasts. If you recall from earlier, the whole reason we're here is that we need an object to tell us how far along we are in a single rotation. By default, animation controller emits values from zero to one. How many and how granular those values are is dependent on how long we want a single rotation to take. Fortunately, Dart gives us a duration class to use. We don't want the galaxy to be spinning so fast as to make us dizzy, so 15 seconds per turn sounds great. The next required parameter is vsync. If you're here from the future, welcome back. You've already heard all about vsync. For those who came here from the past, we'll just say that this is what gives Flutter a reference to the object to notify about changes. This is that thing, and it needs to mix in some ticker provider code. We'll be diving into the details about this in a future episode. And if we left things at that, nothing much happens. That's because we've been given a controller, but haven't pushed any of its buttons. We wanted our galaxy to spin forever, right? For that, we'll just ask the controller to continually repeat the animation. Finally, 
we can go back and fix the compiler error we left lingering around by passing the animation controller to the turns parameter in our rotation transition. But this still doesn't quite feel like we have control over time. The galaxy just does its own thing now, right? Don't forget, though, we have a handle on a controller. Let's make use of it. I don't want just anyone stopping and starting my galaxy, though, so I'm going to make it a bit of an Easter egg. We'll add a sibling to the galaxy, which is a simple button hidden off in the corner. I'm passing a reference to our controller to the button so that within its ONTAP listener, we can stop or restart the animation. The controller maintains, among other things, the status of the animation, which we can check and stop if we're running or restart if not. And there you go. By using an animation controller, we're able to control the animation on demand. But that's not all you can do with the controller. With it, you can also animate to or backwards to a specific value, fling the animation forward with a given velocity, or control multiple animations with the same controller. This was just our first taste of explicit animations in Flutter. We saw how a transition widget works with an animation controller to provide some directionality and control over how our animation works. In the next episodes, we'll be diving deeper into explicit animations and how to get even more customized. See you then. Wow, that was amazing. Hi, I'm Fitz from the Flutter team. On December 11th, we're going to have Flutter Interact. We'll have a live stream here for you to watch, and I hope you can join us.